We often have debates over what's the greatest year in hip hop. I talk to some people, they say it's 89. I talk to other people, they say it's 98, it's 99, it's 97, it's 2010, it's 2013, 2016. With this series, I want to look back at some of the albums dropped each year to see what really is the greatest year in hip hop as far as releases. And today, I'm going to be discussing hip hop in 1996. If you haven't already, check out my video, Greatest Year in Hip Hop 1998. I'll put it up here. But let's get into it. Going through albums released in 1996, I realized why this year was talked about so much and requested so much in the comments. Uh, I didn't realize how many great albums dropped this year. <laughs> like just classic, classic albums dropped this year. So uh, I'm going to run through some of them. You leave your opinion in the comments with some of your favorite albums in 1996. First of all, to kick things off, I think after this date, everything just fell in place. On February 13th, iconic day, we got the release of Tupac, All Eyes On Me, The Fugees, The Score, and I feel so bad for him. We got Mad Skills' debut album from where? Like, Mad Skills had to be like, what the fuck did y'all do? <laughs> like, to his record company, like, to drop on the same day as Tupac's, uh, for lack of better words, comeback album after serving time in jail, really newly signed to Death Row. Uh, Fuji's, this is their real, like, back against the wall. If this one doesn't work, we're out of here album. The score, which went on to, win, went on to sell over 10 million copies. Grammy Awards. It's funny that I believe All Eyes On Me is probably close to Diamond as well since it's a double album. And the Fugees also are a Diamond album with the score. Like to show that hip hop on that day had two critically acclaimed commercial successful albums is, it deserves to be looked at, you know what I mean? And appreciate it. And again, I still feel bad for Mad Skills for dropping this album. <laughs> like, like on that day that had to be tough that following month we got the release of Busta Rhymes debut album The Coming which had singles like Woo Ha and I make sure everything we make raw <laughs> uh, It's a Party was on there as well great great debut album after the disbanding of Leaders of the New School and appearing on so many features, tribe albums and things of that nature, we finally got a debut album from Busta Rhymes, which was like, I remember seeing the Wuha video, even the ODB remix version is like, this is fucking ridiculous. Imagine watching that as a kid, you know what I mean? That's what I miss about hip hop, I was just going to tangent. Videos, like really, really great videos and what they used to mean. And on April 2nd, we got a Ghetto Boys album, The Resurrection, which I only remember, uh, the world is a ghetto from that album to sprinkle some more southernness in there we got master p mr ice cream man and i remember that as a kid mr ice cream man that probably kind of started the no limit run to me i could be wrong but let me know in the comments if i am uh but that that was like the the kickoff of the no limit run that mr ice cream man i remember riding around with my older cousins and uncles and they would just be blasting that like it was just crazy and imagine that's dropping the same year as tupac and the fujis like you don't even it's so crazy hip-hop is so eclectic this one is for me from being from dc in the dmv area uh dj cool let me clear my throat that shit rang off for the whole summer like for years and years to come let me clear my throat like that shit used to ring off so much i remember being in the car and they would play that shit on the radio cookouts birthday parties <laughs> mcdonald's play <laughs> that shit just rang off everywhere for those who don't know dj cool you look it up i'm pretty sure you heard let me clear my throat somewhere we got a two short album getting it on may 21st Lost Boys debut album, Legal Drug Money, dropped on June 4th with Renee, uh, Lex Coops, Beamers, and the Bands. That summer was so crazy. Like, look how many, what happened to the summer bangers? Like, we had Pac going that summer. We had Lost Boys, Let Me Clear My Throat. We had uh, the Fugees. We had, and this is just, we haven't really even hit the summer yet. <laughs> but all these songs rang off. We even got a Heather B debut album. Those don't know Heather B, uh, Sway in the Morning, Real World, Amazing MC, 
We got her debut album, Helter Skelter, Nocturnal, came out June 19th. Came out June 18th, excuse me. We got Jay-Z debut album was dropped the day before my birthday, June 25th, with Reasonable Doubt. The sleeper classic that wasn't appreciated two years later. What'd he say? I gave you prophecy on my first joint and you all lamed out. Didn't really appreciate it till the second one came out. You know what I mean? Reasonable Doubt. Just probably one of the greatest, not even hip-hop, one of the greatest albums of all time. So like, Fuji's pop. Jay, like it was oh my gosh um we got a prince paul album crucial conflict came out a week later hey in the middle of the fall. if y'all don't know about that shit man <laughs> de la soul the stakes are high came out the same day as crucial conflict album july 2nd which is some consider de la soul's greatest album uh We'll, we'll, well, I'll make another video debating that. <laughs> we got Nas. It was written July 2nd as well. This is a week following, a week following Reasonable Doubt. Like Jay-Z and Nas just been tied to each other like their whole career. But we got It Was Written July 2nd, which for some Nas fans was a total turn from Illmatic. But as time went on, I see a lot of people appreciate It Was Written more. And some people even say they prefer that over Illmatic. Me, myself, I feel like It Was Written... His songwriting got better. His lyrics got better. The production was better. I know. <laughs> I know Illmatic had all the greatest hip-hop producers in the world. But it's like, just the sound, it sounded. I know it's more, I, I guess you could say it's more commercial, you know? But him and Pac had the same fucking sample from Street Dreams and uh, All Eyes on Me, which is funny, which probably escalated their beef even more. And Pac getting inspired, I... I'll get to it, but Pac released another album this year later, which had me and my girlfriend on it, which was inspired by uh, I Gave You Power. UGK and Tribe Called Quest dropped on the same day, July 30th. Outcast with Beast, Rhymes, and Life, and UGK, Riding Dirty, which is a fucking classic. Uh, R.P. Pimp C. Silk the Shocker dropped August 12th, the next month, with his debut album, Silk the Shocker. <laughs> with that horrible album cover. I know we had, they had the uh, Cash Money and Lil' Lemon had known for having horrible classic album covers, but that first Silk the Shocker one is just nasty. It was a big year for women in hip-hop as well. MC Light dropped the week later, Bad As I Wanna Be. I believe that's the one with, I rock the party that rocks the body. You rock the party that rock the body. And uh, the skate one, I believe, on there. Keep on, keep keeping on. Oh my gosh, which was on the, uh, oh, what is that movie? Sunset Park soundtrack. Psh. My mind is just crazy. <laughs> My memory is insane. MC Light dropped this. I feel bad for it, even though those were some classic hits on there. She dropped the same day as Outkast, AT Aliens, which if you didn't respect them when, at Southern Playalistic, and they didn't because they booed them at the source, you had to give them respect after AT Aliens with Elevators, Jezebel, Two Dope Boys, it, it just goes on and on and on and on and on. You know what I mean? Their storytelling on that album, their progression as just MCs from Southern Playlistic to AT Aliens is just, you could tell they had something to prove. Do a die drop picture this a week later. Do you want to ride in the backseat of the caddy? <laughs> Twister, one of Twister's greatest verses ever was on that album. We had The Roots Drop, Philadelphia Half-Life. Is that the one? What they do, what they do, what they do. When they was mocking the bad boy, well, more than just bad boy videos, but just hip hop in general at that time. We had a Razzcast debut album that year, Exhibit debut album that year. We had a West Side Connection album dropped on October 22nd, I believe. MOP album dropped, Firing Squad, The Brat second album, and Iron Man dropped on the same day. Also, E-40 dropped on the same day as well. And we got the Ghostface Iron Man album that year as well. Jesus Christ. In the fourth quarter of that year, we had another Tupac album. His final album uh, recorded while he was alive, Seven Day Theory, which is probably my favorite Tupac album. And that one is just... To, to drop all eyes on me and come right back, uh, what, eight, nine months later with another banger, Tupac is the GOAT. Like... <laughs> And there's so much shit on that Seven Day Theory album from Bomb First to Hell Mary to Just Like Daddy to uh, 
blasphemous to um against all odds it's so much truth on that album it's it's like if he didn't get killed before he had to get killed out of because he was saying a lot, <laughs> a lot of shit after that funny eminem infinite album underground release if you're a real hip-hop fan backpack or just an Eminem fan in general, you know that Infinite was released. His first real album was released that year on November 12th. And on that same day, Little Kim dropped Hardcore, which changed the trajectory of women in hip hop from that day forward. Everything about the women in hip hop changed a bit. Like, not in a bad way, but you could tell, like, I remember my cousin having that Hardcore CD and me being six years old looking at it like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, oh, shit. Like, she could get away with this. Like, this is insane. And if you hear the shit she's talking about on that album from the first song, Big Mama Thing, I used to be, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sing the lyrics. <laughs> I'm not going to sing the lyrics. But that drop in the same day as Eminem Infinite, I think, which is dope. Snoop Dogg also dropped that day with The Dog Father, which would be his last album on Death Row Records, which wasn't his last and second album. Um, which wasn't received really well. Um, we don't really go back to the dog father. You could tell there was a lot of, obviously there was a lot of turmoil going on in that time in Death Row, Tupac passing, uh, Dr. Dre left, Snoop Dogg was just out there on his own. And I believe Snoop Dogg is one of those artists who's obviously a GOAT, great, however you want to call it, but he needs like a, a producer. He needs a Dre, he needs a Pharrell, he needs somebody to battle. He needs a Daz, he needs a, you know what I mean? He needs someone to like to he needs a doc he needs these people around you know what i mean but the dog father did drop that year on the same day as little kim hardcore and eminem infinite which is crazy full circle a couple years later eminem signs with dr dre and you know history the following week after little kim's debut we get foxy brown's debut as well il nana isn't that crazy how like I wonder if that kind of started their beef. Like, what was the start of Little Kim and Foxy Brown? I need to do a video on that to break that down to see what the fuck was that all about. But her album dropped, both of their debut albums dropping a week apart. It's crazy. What do you prefer, Il Nana or Hardcore? Let me know in the comments. Because Il Nana had some shit and Foxy was, Foxy was saying some shit too. And she had Nas and Hov. <laughs> Mob Deep dropped the same day. <laughs> this is funny. Mob Deep, Foxy Brown, and Shaq all dropped on the same day. Shaq with, uh, you can't stop the rain. I think Biggie was on that album as well. Mob Deep, Hell on Earth, which had that Tupac diss on it after he passed, which is, I know a lot of people choose the infamous, but Hell on Earth is a great, great Mob Deep classic album to me. Only thing I don't like about the Mob Deep album, Hell on Earth, is that cover. That cover really like, I just don't like it. It just seems a lot of covers in the 90s when I was doing this list. I was like, these covers are horrible. What were we thinking? <laughs> some of them just look so, I don't know. Take a look. Go back and look at some of the albums that came out in 96 and look at those covers. Dr. Dre Drop presents uh, The Aftermath, I believe that's the name of it. The compilation album would have been there, done that. Uh, his first release after Death Row. Went platinum, but it's a dud in the Dr. Dre discography. And it was also just a compilation album. And I believe The Firm was coming out too, like the next year, if I'm not mistaken. BG Chopper City came out, the, the first original one came out that year in 1996 uh, before the re-release. And I believe that was like the first, one of the first cash money uh, releases, Chopper City. And some consider that a fucking classic. So we got 3-6 Mafia second album that year. And we also got Red Man Muddy Waters to end the year on December 10th. Which some might say that's Red Man's classic album as well. So like so many classic albums. I'm going to try, try to count how many. I, one, two. Let's see. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12. We got like 12, 13 classic hip hop albums dropped that year, which is crazy. And probably more. I'm pro I know I'm missing some, but just off first thoughts, 12, 13 classic albums dropped that year in hip hop. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot. 
I wrote down some of the highest first weeks <clears throat> that year. Uh, seven Day Theory coming in at number one, sold 664,000 records, which was probably Tupac's highest first week numbers. The second one was All Eyes On Me, which sold 566,000 records. Coming in at three, we had The Dog Father at 470,000 records. Death Row just... Death Row. <laughs> Death Row just killed everything that year. Uh, no pun intended. Uh, it was written was 268,000 that week in the first week. And the score rounded out the top five with 205,000 the first week, which were crazy numbers. Crazy, crazy, crazy numbers. 1996 was a crazy year. Uh, from the Pox to the Nazis to the Outcasts to the De La Souls to the Silk the Shockers to the BGs to the, not the BGs, the band, but BG, the artist, uh, to Little Kim to Foxy Brown to Eminem to it's so many different artists dropping that year and shit was changing. It was so many different aspects of it. Like, if you wanted your backpack, you had the roots. You had Daylight. You had Outkast. You had, you had those. If you wanted your street shit, you had the Pox. You had the Nas. You had the, even the women got representation. You had Little Kim, Foxy Brown, uh, MC Light, all dropping bangers, classic albums that year, classic singles that year. You had Southern rap showed up. West Coast hip hop showed up. What I'm saying is, every region showed up. West Coast, East Coast. Down South, Midwest, Crucial Conflict, Do or Die from the Midwest, Eminem from the Midwest. Like you had every representation of every part of the United States pretty much being represented that year and dropping albums that meant something to the culture. And with that, 1996 has to be the best year in hip hop, right? Let me know in the comments. For me, 96 is up there. What I want to know, what is your favorite year in hip hop? Also, what's some of your favorite albums that dropped in 1996? I know this is going to be a tough one because it's so many dope albums that dropped that year. It's so many, so many, so many. I want to do this series. I want to do R&B. I want to do rock and roll with the years. Uh, the best year in R&B. The best year in rock. But as always, I'm Tatum. Peace.